Brickyard 44, 67, wind 200 at 10, runway 31 left at Kilo Echo, clear for takeoff. Noon, April 10th, 1912. RMS Titanic departs Southampton, England on her maiden voyage. Along with her older twin sister, Olympic, she is by far the largest ship in the world, surpassing Cunard's Mauritania by 45%. Titanic sailed for Cherbourg, France, where she arrived at 6.30 p.m. Spending less than two hours in Cherbourg, Titanic picked up additional passengers who boarded via the White Star tenders, nomadic, and traffic. At 8.10 p.m., Titanic sailed through the dark towards Queentown, Ireland. The next day, April 11th, at 1.30, Titanic departs Queentown and enters the open Atlantic Ocean, making full steam for New York on her maiden voyage. At noon on the same day, a little steamer less than a third the size of Titanic departed New York with 740 passengers and crew. This ship was RMS Carpathia, a Cunard liner, and she was bound for Austria-Hungary in the Mediterranean. Carpathia's passengers were made up of older American tourists and former immigrants returning home to visit their families. For the next few days, Carpathia's voyage would be completely normal. On April 14th, four days into her maiden voyage, Titanic struck an iceberg at 11.40 p.m. ship's time. Fatally wounded, Titanic slowed to a stop, and the crew began assessing and preparing. Titanic had just two hours and 40 minutes until she would founder, but many among the crew thought it could all be over even sooner. The ship had 2,200 souls on board, and even though she was only two-thirds full, there were not enough lifeboats for all aboard, regardless of how much time the crew had to launch them. Titanic would not send a distress signal until 15 minutes after midnight, 35 minutes after striking the iceberg. 58 miles away, Harold Cottam, the sole wireless operator aboard Carpathia, was overdue to turn in for the night, but he had stayed up late waiting for a response from the Parisian. Unaware of the distress call and having overheard messages meant for Titanic, Cottam kindly addressed Titanic to ask her wireless operators if they were aware that Cape Cod was trying to relay messages to her. Titanic's response? Come at once. It is a distress message. CQD. Cottam found the captain of Carpathia at once to inform him of the distress signal. The time was 12.30 p.m. ship's time. Captain Arthur Rostron wrote the ship's position on a scrap of paper for Cottam to communicate with Titanic. After four minutes of silence, Cottam followed up with Titanic to obtain her position. Titanic replied, 41.46 degrees north, 50.14 degrees west. Cottam went back to Captain Rostron to report Titanic's position. Immediately after, he signaled to Titanic that Carpathia was putting about and heading for them. Aboard Titanic, Harold Bride, the junior wireless operator, rushed through, quote, an awful mass of people on deck to find Captain Edward Smith to inform him that Carpathia was on her way. Before we get further into this video, I want to remind you to hit the subscribe button. If you're interested in transportation, history, or both, you'll want to know when a new video is posted. If you have something to say, make sure you leave a comment below. Okay, back to the video. Carpathia was 58 miles away from Titanic's position when she changed course. Captain Rostron, who had been about to retire for the night when he heard of Titanic's distress, was in the process of redressing when he sent for the ship's chief engineer to relay his orders. He ordered all off-duty stokers to their positions and for the crew to make all possible speed in order to arrive to Titanic's aid as soon as possible. Fully aware of how urgently Carpathia's assistance was needed, he also had the chief engineer shut off the heat and hot water for the entire ship to get every tenth of a knot out of the steam produced by the engines. While Rostron ensured that his ship was on course for Titanic's position, he ordered the first officer to see to it the lifeboats were swung out and prepared for launch, and that extra gear was available if needed. The ship's three doctors were to take space in the dining rooms and prepare to treat the survivors. Like Titanic, Carpathia was not filled to capacity on this voyage. Nonetheless, space needed to be prepared for the untold number of survivors who would soon be taken aboard. The ship's officers, including Rostron, were to give up their captains to accommodate some of the survivors. Smoking rooms, dining rooms, the library, and other public spaces on the ship were readied. Crew were stationed at various gangways and were ready to haul survivors aboard. Rope ladders were prepared and chair slings made available to help the sick and wounded who may not have been able to climb aboard themselves. Finally, the chief steward was to have coffee available for the crew, who would surely be in for a long night. At 2.20 ship's time, Titanic made her final plunge, sending all who had not found a lifeboat into the ocean. The water was 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Carpathia was still an hour and 40 minutes away. With the engines, crew, and the ship herself working as hard as possible, Carpathia pushed gallantly past her designed maximum speed of 14 knots, then 15 knots, then 16 knots, then 17 knots. 
Finally, 17 knots and change were achieved as Carpathia charged through the same ice-ridden waters that Titanic had sailed through hours earlier. She dodged icebergs with the help of her lookouts, the alertness of her crew, and a little bit of luck. Beginning at 2.45, Rostron had rockets fired every 15 minutes to assure Titanic survivors, if within sight, that help was on the way. At 4 in the morning, the crack of dawn, Carpathia arrived at the scene of the sinking of Titanic. Carpathia's passengers, awakened by the activity on deck, the stopping of the ship's engines, and the growing cold from the lack of heat supply, looked out to see a waving green flare from Titanic's lifeboat number 2. At daybreak, at least 25 icebergs 200 feet or higher were in the vicinity. For the next four hours, Carpathia took aboard 706 survivors. The crew took down the names of each survivor as they landed on the deck. The last to climb aboard the rescue ship was second officer Charles Lightoller, who commanded lifeboat 12 and the 75 souls on board. Lightoller would come to find that he was Titanic's senior surviving officer. With everyone aboard, Carpathia cruised the area in search of more survivors, but there were none. With no one left to save, Captain Rostron had to decide where to direct his ship. Carpathia and her hundreds of paying passengers had been headed for Europe, but suddenly there were not enough provisions on board to make it across the Atlantic. Rostron had the ship turned back towards New York, during the journey, the sick and injured slowly recovered, widows and families mourned the lost, and Carpathia's crew and passengers did what they could to help. Carpathia was bombarded with wireless inquiries from the press as she made way for America. Rostron instructed Harold Cottam and Harold Bride, who had agreed to help Cottam, to ignore these messages. Instead, the duo relayed the survivor list and other crucial information to shore. Over the next several days, Cottam and Bride worked incessantly with little sleep. As she entered New York Harbor on April 18th, Cunard's little ship became the center of attention. Journalists hitching rides on tugboats shouted questions through megaphones. Carpathia pulled into Pier 54 at 9.30 p.m. The world watched as Titanic survivors landed in New York, and the aftermath of the disaster unfolded in the form of government inquiries, regulatory changes, and cultural shifts. Famous Titanic survivor Molly Brown presented Captain Rostron with an award on behalf of all Titanic survivors. Rostron was then received by President William Taft, who awarded him with the Congressional Medal of Honor. As for Carpathia, she continued her successful commercial service until she was enlisted for the war effort in 1915. For three years, she carried crucial supplies from Boston to Liverpool until, on July 17, 1918, she was torpedoed by Germany's U-55 and sunk 120 miles off the coast of Ireland. Five of the crew were killed, 275 were saved. Carpathia's wreck was discovered in 500 feet of water in September of the year 2000. Under the command of Captain Arthur Rostron, RMS Carpathia carried out a stellar rescue operation on the night of April 15, 1912. While there were other ships within range of Titanic's position, some of which were closer than Carpathia, these ships were unable to reach Titanic quickly for various reasons that may warrant a future video. But Carpathia and her crew pushed their limits to save 706 people from the unforgiving North Atlantic.